Hello then and welcome to the beautiful Partridge Lakes where I'm going to be talking you through like a, a beginner's guide to fishing basically. You know, obviously through lockdown last year, fishing, oh, it's never been as popular. It is absolutely amazing. I've never seen as many new faces on the bank. And it's fantastic for me, obviously as an angling coach, it's fantastic for me. But what's great to see is obviously, you know, the young anglers going with the granddads and the dads, you know, rekindling the passion for it. Just, I've fished since I was like, you know, three or four year old. I'm 42 now, I know I don't look it, but I'm actually 42 now, folks. And it's just, it's one of them, it's like, it's the most participated sport in the country. But then there's not a like a lot of people know about it. But obviously now, granddad's dad's rekindled the passion for it. They're taking the sons and the grandsons in. It's just amazing. So, starting off wise, where I suppose a lot of uh, you know newcomers to the sport go wrong is they're choosing the wrong equipment or the wrong gear. They're just going in fishing. I don't want to talk to you a lot. I want to get fishing. All right, so I'll, I'll keep this brief. I'll keep it quick they're just choosing the wrong gear there's not i wouldn't say there's loads of advice out there to be fair but oh wait that's until now because i'm giving you the right advice don't you worry about that so what i want to go through first is obviously if you're rocking up somewhere like here at parties lakes where let me tell you everything's on site there's a tackle shop on site obviously there's toilets there's a cafe you don't want for anything here it's, it's a beautiful fishery um you can go into the shop and get kitted out with like a whip now i'm using I'm using what's called a, a pole which can go to like you know in excess of 16 meters but starting off wise you do not need to go any any further than say just a couple of sections out that I've got on today you'll get a, a few what's called top kits with it that you know you can ask your, your tackle shop to elasticate for you which we'll go through later on and excuse me for a waffle because I do like to waffle <laughs> hopefully it's going to get edited you can go and purchase the whips uh, at, uh, at the tackle shop on site here and, and they'll kit you out Basically what you'll get is you'll get a length of pole or whip like this that is pre-elasticated. Now, the main thing is choosing the correct gear. And what I mean by that is the correct line, the correct floats, the correct hooks, the correct elastics and the correct shots. And then it all comes down to bait, but we'll, we'll brush on bait later on. So basically line wise, what we need to use is a main line. Now what I mean by main line is, this is your elastic here, which is what's cushioning the fish. So you hook into a fish, and your elastic's cushion and everything. So your main line is this bit here. Your main line on your rig that goes down to your hook length, which I'll talk you through in a sec. Now, it can be quite complicated when you're first getting into it, and I see all too often, uh, you know, newcomers rocking up with like sea fishing line, it's miles too thick, you know, thick as your fingers sometimes, it's ridiculous. Now, fish aren't gonna go anywhere near that. I suppose the other beauty as well is you can actually buy ready-made rigs, you know what I mean? Uh, the tackle shop on site here at Partridge, it does ready-made rigs as well, so you can purchase them. But it's good if you get used to, you know, making your own rigs, because then if anything happens, you can only blame yourself, you can't paint the rig that you bought. So mainline wise, it's this bit that you want to get used to, that little number there. It starts with a zero, point 0.19. For all your main lines on fisheries like this, you shouldn't need to go any heavier than that. Um, you do on sort of like big big cat waters but you know that goes out of the window for these we just want to catch everything swimming and that's what we're that's what we're tackling up today for so your point 0.19 main line and then what's very important is when you're choosing your hook length that you go slightly lighter so basically the bigger the number the heavier the line and the thicker the line now that's important because fish can see your line uh, so you don't really want to be using a too heavy a hook length. It doesn't matter about main line, that's irrelevant. Fish are only seeing like that bottom two inches or three inches of your, of your line, which is why you've got to use a lighter hook length. I'm sorry for waffling. Uh, but basically, so we've got a 0.17 hook length there and a 0.19 main line. Now, obviously it comes in all different, uh, different strengths. I'd also use like a, a real light one, which is a 0.13. This rig in particular, which I'll talk you through in a sec, it's got a 0.13 hook length on, so you see, see there, that last little bit there, four inches, 0.13, but also, I don't know where they are, I'll find them for you in a bit, folks, I promise. There's companies now, Guru, Preston, quite a lot of them do them. They actually do them pre-tied, I tell you what, it saves you such a job tying them up yourself. You do them pre-tied, so all you've got to do is just shorten them down to whatever length you want. Now, let's start at this end, the elastic. So. 
obviously the the whips that you're going to purchase this should become uh, oh sorry should already be elasticated so you shouldn't have to worry too much about that but if you're you know getting into fishing a bit more you know maybe purchasing a pole then I'd recommend anything from like a, an 8 to a 14 grade elastic don't go any heavier than that and don't go any lighter for this time of year so coming down there obviously this is our main line we've got a float now floats come in all different shapes and sizes basically stick to that kind of shape flow for the fishing that we're going to be doing which i'll show you in a sec stick to that kind of shape flow now what is confusing is putting the correct amount of shots or weights on for what the float takes now a lot of these floats they'll have the actual grammage they'll either have that or it'll be like a number say like four times ten four times twelve four times fourteen to be honest, I've been fishing like, you know, a long, long time, over, well, nearly 40 years, and I still don't have a clue what the four times and whatever means. So just go for the grammage floats. That's the, that's the easiest way to understand it. And then you can work out that from like what shots you're putting on, what the actual float will take. So I've not plumbed up yet, which is what I'm going to talk you through later on, because uh, we know where the top of the water is. We need to find where the bottom of the water is. We'll do that in a sec. But what I've got here is all the shots that's going to help cock the float so I'm just having a little bit of bristle there towards the bottom of my hook now the reason for that is I want to just get straight down to where the fish are where I'm going to be feeding just so I can you know have a good day get straight into the fish now onto that we've got a small hook now small hooks are important for, for getting the bites obviously you're going out for the first time you want to make sure you're getting bites so a combination of light lines small hooks and maggots you're not going to go far wrong hook wise uh, it's the bigger the number no 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 sorry I'm like how dare I lie to you it's the smaller the number the smaller the hook no. yeah so like I'd be using like an 18s but then you go to a 16s and that's bigger no. and then you go to a 14s and that's bigger <laughs> have I got it the wrong way around <laughs> I've got it the wrong way around again right so the, the bigger the number, the, number the, bigger the, the bigger the number right what is it the bigger the number the smaller the hook Bar. So the bigger the number, like an 18 to 20, is the smaller the hook. I have I have done this before, I promise. So I've got an 18 on that one, but then when I'm going shallow, which I'll sort you through in a sec, which is a great way of catching fish this time of year, but you've got to prime it, I'll go on a slightly larger hook, like a 16, is not, not a bigger number, like a 16, which obviously is just designed to catch bigger fish and you know uh, better quantities basically. So I'll talk you through plumbing up that one in a sec. But what we need for this time of year, when it's like typical sort of summer's day, it's, it's boiling hot, there's no wind, conditions are, you know, you couldn't really get worse conditions to be fair, but by picking a, a peg in the shade or if you've got like a little bit of wind blowing in, that's what you're looking for. Don't, where well, I see a lot of anglers go wrong just getting into it, they instantly just like rock up in the car, you know, get the box out and go and put it on a peg. If it's flat calm, you know, it might be the shortest walk. I have been known to do that. But the most important thing is that you, you have a quick quick scan of the lake and see where the wind's been pushing and then obviously that'll tell you where all the bait's going you know the little flies and everything like that the bottom's getting stirred up and also you'll see signs of fish you know cruising and bow waving around so that's what we're looking for i've chosen this peg because it's in the shade and i'm strawberry blonde well i was strawberry blonde not anymore you know what i mean so same elastic on this one which is shallow rig exactly the same main line we've got 0.19 on but look how much um, smaller that float is. It only takes three number 11s shots, which I'll talk you through in a sec. And again, we've got the same three inch hook length on, but it's a larger hook, remember, because with this float in particular, or this rig, I, I want to try and target the, the bigger fish. So if I do see any cruisers, I can sneak this bait in front of them and they tend to have it straight away. Plus catch a lot of fish. And then the last one that I want to talk you through is a different float again sorry for confusing you but if you just stick to these three rigs you'll not go wrong and this is what's called an inline dibber inline because the flow uh, sorry the line is actually passing through the float through the body and then out through the stem so dead simple all these floats have on to keep them in place is a little bit of silicon again these can be brought from you know readily available from the tackle shops and all you do is just slide that over the float just to fix that in position and then you can move that up and down depending on where the fish are through the water. A little bit different with the shot in, we've got a tiny little bulk there, just so it comes straight down into the fish, and it's basically a self-hooking tool, that one. That's, you wouldn't really bother with that one when you're first getting started, it's these other two rigs that you'd start off with. So, that's me done enough waffling. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna put a, a plummet on, I'll show you how to put a plummet on the hook, and then we're gonna go and find the depth, 
and then we're gonna get fishing. Cause I wanna go and catch some fishes, folks. Yeah! Yeah. Right, so plumbing up then. So all we're gonna do, this is a plummet. So you get them in various different sizes. I'd recommend one about 20 grams. So all we do, through this little loop at the top, you pass your hook through and then fold it out and then there'll either be like a, a bit of cork or foam at the bottom. All we're gonna do is just hook or place the hook into that foam and that's it, your plummet's on. So basically, because this is, you know, it's quite heavy weight, 20 grams, that's gonna go into the water and I'm gonna lower the rig down until I find, let me get the float for you. Basically, it's gonna come down in the water like that and I'm looking for sort of that with my float out of the water. But, I'll talk you through more when, when we're actually, um, you know, plumbing up. If you're on a slope, then you go a little bit further out, obviously you can imagine these lake banks here, it's sloping down the side, it's flat down the middle and it slopes up for the far bank. So obviously the further down the slope you come, then that float's just gonna be disappearing. So that's why it's very important that you're picking a, a marker so you know you're going back to the same spot every time. But what we want is sort of like that. You're looking to plumb up sort of halfway down the body of the float. So it's slightly over depth, it's called. So let's go and find it now. Where I'm plumbing there is I'm too much over depth. So when I let all resistance go off that float, so what I want to do is find the middle of the body of the float, which is there. See that reed that I'm touching my pole tip? If I line that float up with the tip of that reed every single time, I know I'm going back to the same spot. Okay, so I suppose the, the last thing then, uh, and the main thing, is bait. Literally, as I say, you don't want for anything here, just rock up and order your maggots here. All you need, pint and a half, two pints of maggots, and you'll have a fantastic day's fishing. As you can see, I've got like two pints of maggots here. They do reds and whites. Obviously, casters come into play as well, but you don't need to bother with casters. If you just want to come up, you know, come to the fishery rather, uh, and have a lovely day's fishing, you're going to get bites all day on maggots. Now, I want to show you a hook in a maggot. Which it's an area where not a lot of anglers are doing it right, you know. No, I mean, no, even like top flight match anglers. I've only just started doing it right, folks, you know what I mean? So basically, what you've got with a maggot, you've got the fat end and you've got the thin end. So with the fat end, that's where we want fat end, that's where we want to put in the hook. So you give it a light squeeze out, what you're left with is a little frilly bit at the bottom. So what we want to do with the hook is just literally just nick it through that frilly bit. The most important thing to remember, folks, um, if you're new to fishing, is not to burst that maggot. If you burst it, I'm not going to say you won't get a bite. Because there's so many fish in here, you probably will get a bite. But if you go to other venues, chances are you're not going to get a bite or it's going to take you a lot longer to get a bite. You must hook it like that so it's got plenty of wriggle in it. Now, if you're putting two maggots on, which I'm going to do down the, down the side when we get fishing in a sec, you put this one on the other way around and what that does that avoids spin-ups and also it avoids your maggots coming back over your hook so you're, uh, you're straight into the fish's mouth so basically squeezing that maggot out again going through the thin end this time and that's how you put two on easy isn't it so all that's left now is to uh, hopefully go and catch some fishies <laughs> 